What's up, everybody? Welcome on into a movie review here on youtube.com slash Shaunasaurus Rex, something I used to do a long time ago on Weekend Review. I uh, stopped doing that show, but I thought, you know what? I was so excited for the Batman that I figured I would go buy a $13 video game and then uh, try and play that game and talk about the movie at the same time. Is this take number three of this? Yes, absolutely it is, because uh, it's... <laughs> Whew, it's, it's harder than it would seem to try and have coherent thoughts and play a video game at the same time. Uh, my name is Sean, though, and I do uh, appreciate you watching this video. If you want more content like this, please scroll down, subscribe, ring that bell, and make sure that you're notified when I post new videos. If you like more of the review stuff, uh, let me know. I'd like to talk more about some movies that are coming up. Um, it would be infrequent, but, you know, some stuff like Turning Red or Everything Everywhere All at Once. There's some movies that I'm looking forward to. And uh, it would be fun to talk about those movies if you're interested in them. If not, hey, that's cool too. No big deal. Uh, thanks for watching, however long you watched. And uh, yeah. Uh, so this is um, this is Batman Vengeance, which, fun story, $13 on the Xbox. Went to go buy this on PS2 because I thought, hey, you know what would be fun? Not having a bunch of tech problems on uh, using an Xbox. Went over to the PS2 section, looked at the PS2 copy of this game it was like $26 and I was like why is this so much more expensive on PlayStation 2 than it is on just a regular a regular Xbox I have no idea it doesn't make any sense um but welcome on in Batman big tent pole movie here for uh what's it called that one studio oh my goodness hello stop please there we go now we're just beating people up the Big Ten poll release for WB, been years in the making. I would press the Y button. Sure. You're under arrest. Cool. Cuff me, Daddy Batman. Uh, been a while in the making. Took a while because of COVID and they had, I think they shut down at least once, maybe twice because of it. Um, but a movie that I've been very interested in. I have always been a fan of the Robert Pattinson um, what would you call it? The Robert Pattinson casting, because I think that he is good. I know that people will most likely be like, yeah, but he was in Twilight. And it's like, yeah, well, that was also like 15 years ago. So maybe, maybe calm down a little bit and go watch something like The Lighthouse or High Life. One of those movies I really liked, The Lighthouse. The other movie I wasn't as big a fan of, High Life, but I still think he's good in both of them. And I think that they could do something interesting with uh, him in the role of Batman and for the most part I would say he actually does uh, the Batman is a movie that is three hours long and boy does it feel like it is three hours long it for the most part is very good it's actually excellent for about two and a half hours two hours and 15 minutes to two hours and 30 minutes but it loses a lot of steam in the end with a pretty bad like final quote-unquote like final boss level where it, it's it's the annoying thing of it is a sequence that I don't think really works all that well on its own, but then it kind of goes in a different direction of giving him so many obstacles to overcome throughout the, the course of the sequence, which is something that irritates me in movies. Like I remember, uh, uh, not remember, but last night in Soho was really bad about this where the final sequence is like, there's a fire happening and someone gets shot and like another person stabbed and then they fall down and hit their head. And you're just like, how many person, how many things does this person need to overcome right now? As we are like at the very end of this movie, it just doesn't, it didn't work for me. And this, there was a similar problem with this movie for me of, there's just a little too much to overcome and it very much doesn't work. Uh, though for the most part, I think this movie is absolutely fantastic. I love the cast of characters that they have, they've implied or employed. I should say not implied, employed. I think Zoe Kravitz is great as Catwoman. I think Catwoman is very interesting in this movie. I really liked her a lot in it. Um, I loved Paul Dano as the Riddler. I think that uh, Jeffrey Wright, which I believe is his name, is terrific as Commissioner Gordon. Like I said, big fan of Pattinson as Batman. I think they really nailed it. I can't even remember who plays the Penguin. It is a famous actor. I believe it's Colin Farrell? Colin Farrell or Colin Firth? Let me get that name quickly. Uh, let me get that name correct quickly. Um, he is so good 
And it's a brilliant makeup job because he is unrecognizable. He's under a lot of prosthetics and a lot of um, makeup. <laughs> uh, and he's just, he's really good. And I can't remember who in the world is, is who in the world plays him. It's going to be really easy when I look at it and it's Colin Farrell and he's very good as, uh, as the penguin. And I really like what they do with the penguin in this movie. He's not, maybe this is a spoiler. Oh, by the way, I'm going to break this into non-spoiler and that'll be very clear when I go into stuff that would qualify as spoilers, more plot specific plot points. Um, so I, if you want to stop watching, totally fine. You can come back later or, you know, not at all your choice. But if you have already seen the movie or you don't care, I'll make sure that there's a big break. And if you want to continue following my thought process through the rest of the review, uh, feel free to stick around for that. Um, I don't know how... Hmm. I like what they do with the Penguin. I think that his character arc is interesting. And I think that he he's a really interesting maybe threats not the well, threats threats the right word I, now i feel like I'm, I'm tiptoeing in a weird in a weird direction I, I i love what they do with the penguin i think it's fantastic what they do with him i i think penguin and uh honestly all three of the i guess you would qualify them as like the rogues gallery very good catwoman Catwoman's in an interesting position because they kind of, it seems like they kind of want her to be, and this is just kind of like broad strokes in general. Uh, they kind of want her to be like, she plays both sides a little bit. You're never quite sure where she's going to lead. She'll work with Batman. She'll work against Batman, which I, I think is very interesting. But I, I think that the three rogues that they picked are excellent in what they're doing for this, uh, for this movie. I really think that Paul Dano steals the show as the Riddler. As a person who does enjoy the Riddler a lot, and I love his egotistical, like, I'm smarter than you, better than you in every way, and I know it, mentality is really fascinating to me. Uh, I've always been a fan of it. Um, I don't remember Batman forever, but I remember liking the Riddler a lot, probably because he was mostly green, but, um, hey, don't shoot that gun at me. Please stop. Hey, don't block. They didn't teach me how to block in the tutorial. Um, Andy Serkis is great as Alfred. I just, I think the cast in this movie from top to bottom is terrific. The opening moments of this movie are also terrific. I cannot express how much I love the first two to two and a half hours of this movie and how disappointing the last 45 minutes are. It is such a weird, like the amount of air that gets let out of the movie for the last sequence is just astonishing. Oh, excuse you. Oh, that's right. I forgot to put handcuffs on. My bad. Stop. Stop. How do I do that? Why? Okay. The way they set stuff up early on in the film, the the darkness, the bleakness, the rain, the sound design, the musical score is all just, it is so good. And I loved it so much. I think the Batmobile is fucking rad. And the scene with the Batmobile in it is so good. I found myself like literally like shaking with excitement and anticipation of what was going to happen because I was so invested in what they were doing. And I think the thing that this movie does the best uh, of anything is actually making Batman a detective, which makes sense given that the Riddler is the, is the villain and he keeps giving Batman all these things that he needs to solve and figure out. And I just, I love how much of the movie is spent with him going to different people, talking to different people employing gadgets in a way that makes sense and is interesting and like how he's bouncing off of the people who are around him and how he's only in like, you know, it's, it's an early sort of, Oh my God. It's an early, early look at Batman and he doesn't have 
all the answers. He doesn't have everything that he needs to like be successful. Like it's, I just, I think it's great the way that they do it. Um, and Oh God, I just, that first chunk is so good is so good and it all falls apart at the last well it doesn't all fall apart i shouldn't say but a lot of it is overshadowed with the the weakness of the following like 45 minutes or whatever um so uh, i don't know i think it's a trip worth ta oh okay yes of course i have to push y to climb a ladder if you are at all interested in seeing this movie, I would recommend giving it uh, giving it a chance. I know it's long; it's three hours. It's it's asking. Okay, I just fell off the building. <laughs> oh, 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 game over. Okay. Uh, oh, that's an interesting checkpoint. Am I supposed to go this way? Um, I think it is overall. I think it's good. I I. It's good verging on great and a few minor alter a few a few alterations here or there would have made this movie amazing and about 30 minutes less of it I think would have really helped that uh, helped that case. But I think in its form I think it is well worth watching. I I overall enjoyed it even if I wasn't wild about the the final sequence. Um, Why is it the last? What happened to Batman? Oh, he was standing there changing what kind of weapon he wanted to use. Ow. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a worth, I think it's well worth, oh, B is, oh, oops. Nice. I think it's well worth watching, uh, is the point that I'm, I'm trying to make. And I'm excited to see tentatively excited to see what they do uh with this franchise moving forward i think i think for the most part i think people are going to enjoy it um and i see even though i don't like the last chunk of the movie i do see what they're going for and i i i get it but also at the same time it's kind of just like this is too much there's too much happening here um let's see is that oh I should mention this. Uh, there is, though this movie is incredibly dark, both visually and story-wise, you know, thematically, it is uh, engrossing, captivating, genuinely creepy and thrilling all at once. There is a pretty good, like, sprinkle of humor throughout the film. Every character seems to have one line throughout the movie that is definitely supposed to be a joke. I think one of them that was used in the trailer was Batman saying, I missed the jump at the end. Um was uh, Batman saying something about, like, you've got a lot of cats to Catwoman. And it's it's tiny, very small little quips and moments of levity that I think help this movie not quite feel so... Uh, not feel quite as bleak, even though it is bleak and dark and um, just... It's a dark, bleak movie. Though, I mean, phrase this differently. Um, so if I, can, I can't make this jump. This is the downfall of Batman. Is this friggin' part of the of the game? Though there are intentional humors in the movie, there are a couple of times where I was. There was one time I laughed when it was not supposed to laugh. And there are several times throughout the film where the movie really wants you to know what's happening. And I think it's kind of just the kind of the curse of Batman or any sort of like super the superhero that has very mainstay or like a very large. What am I doing wrong here? Am I do I need to grapple? What am I doing? Um has a very large fan base, a very large audience. They're trying to get everybody into this movie. And the number of times where they tell you something that is so obvious that's happening is really confusing. And it's just, it's, it's kind of annoying. Cause it's like, I'm an adult. I understand how this works. I, I get what's happening in this moment. Um, they even put in, and this will tie back into the, uh, the moment I laughed when I definitely was not supposed to, 
they do have this movie updated to be, you know, it is the 2020s and it is, uh, this must be the, what in the, they have this movie updated to be the 2020s. People are using phones. They're using phones as flashlights, phones to record stuff. Uh, but there's an element of it with the Riddler. Now this isn't much of a, this isn't a spoiler, uh, where he is using the internet to, um, get his message out there. And it's, it's very bizarre. It makes sense in context, but it is unintentionally funny to see him live streaming with like a chat that has like Twitch emotes essentially. And they, they show that one time. And I just, I thought it was hysterical. (laughs) It, It is such a weird turn that I wasn't expecting that it was funny to me because it's just like, what, like what? isn't happening anyway um but aside from that i think that kind of covers everything that's that's non-spoilery i know that last part might be like a little bit spoilery i don't know what i'm doing here i can't i can't i know why that's too early i don't know what i'm doing video game what do you want me to do the joker's men have mary and the mystery remains unsolved well it doesn't sound like it's unsolved because you know that joker has mary Am I not supposed to? Okay, I can dive here. I don't know what I'm doing. This sucks. Do I need to look up a walkthrough? Um, yes. Overall, I think this movie is good. I think it could have been a lot better. But I think it's good. If you are inter- interested in it, try to go see it without like any real uh, any real spoilers. Um, because I think there's a lot of... Fun to be had is not the right term. But I do think that there is a lot of genuine thrill to, uh, to the film. Um, and I, I, I encourage you to... If you're interested, just go into it as blind as possible. The trailers, don't worry, haven't given a whole lot, uh, haven't given a whole lot away. So I think that's uh, that's a positive. I think for the most part, they've done a pretty good job setting a tone and giving you a character that you're interested in seeing what in the world is going on with the, as far as the villains are concerned. Um, and I think that they just they really knock it out of the park when when this movie hits. It hits so hard and is so good. And it just, it just unravels so much in the last 45 minutes. And it's just, it's, it's a true bummer and a genuine frustration to just feel so deflated after being like, I was so in on this and it was so amazing. And I walked away just being like, it was fine. It was, it was fine. Uh, So that concludes our spoiler free portion of the video. So there you go. If you want to, if you want to stick around for some more spoilery content, stick around and uh, we'll start that here shortly. All right. Have all the spoiler people gone away? They don't want to know anything. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what exactly, I guess <laughs> what it, hmm. Hmm. Hang on. Let me, let me think for a moment here. Hold on. Okay. I have thought, uh, spoiler wise. I like what they do with the, I love the way they tie everything together as far as like what the Riddler's trying to get at and how all of the parties like Falcone and, and the penguin and all of that stuff is, is tied together. I really enjoyed that. Um, I think, for me personally, I think it's a little, it's a little obvious kind of what the direction they're going in is because I have a little more experience with like some of the stuff. And it seems like they've kind of skewed more towards Bruce. Oh, that, that, sorry. The rain really kicked up and it startled me. It was a big old gust of wind. Sorry. Um, they've steered more towards like, Hey, maybe Thomas Wayne wasn't the best guy in the world. And maybe he has, darker secrets and, and things of that nature that, uh, um, make it, you know, 
make him more of a villain where Bruce has to kind of overcome a little bit more as far as like personal stuff rather than just as Batman, if that makes sense. Um, I like the way they play into it. They don't commit as far as some other medias, uh, mediums I've seen like the, the telltale Batman games really dive into the whole, like Wayne was really not a good guy sort of thing. This one's a lot lighter on that with him just kind of, kind of tiptoeing into like the evil side, but still being overall a good man. It doesn't seem like they want to push him too far in that direction. Cause I think they want you to still feel like he's coming. Like Bruce is coming from a good family that had a tragic event happen to him. Um, and I like the way, even though, so let's go back to the last, let's go back to the last, uh, whoops, hit the wrong button. Let's go back to the last 45 45 minutes here. And what I don't like about it is it's just, it's like, it's too much. It's, it's this annoying thing of like, Oh good. Now Batman's hanging off of this and there's people shooting at him. And even going for that part, like it is very weird. The whole aspect of him, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. The whole aspect of like the Riddler having like 500 followers, but also being able to like afford literal bombs is kind of odd, but not all that far fetched. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to have problems with the fact that like the, the gunmen that are hired are only able to hit, uh, like they only hit like one shot, the one shot that they need to hit. But I think you can write that out and excuse that by being like, yeah, he just hired a bunch of fucking idiots off the internet. And like, they're only going to hit so much, you know, they're not going to do a whole lot of damage. That sequence just is, it's too much. He's getting shot at by people on the, on the thing. He's hanging off the side. He has to go in and do all this. He gets knocked out and Selena Kyle comes and saves him, which like is, is a cool hero moment. But the way that they kind of, uh, the way that they set that up is a bit, I, I don't know if a bit much is the way it's a bit obvious with the way that they're going to try and do that. And I like the idea that like the, the Riddler has Batman's um, phrase of I am vengeance and the way that that gets twisted to be him on the same side. The scene that I thought needed to be the end of it is them in the interrogation room talking to each other. I, I, fucking love that scene it's really the only two the really the only time the two characters are on screen together they share like a couple of like phone calls back and forth so they interact like a little bit here and there but that's the the thing where they're just they're having a one-sided you know sort of back and forth thing and the way that they, my score was seven the way that they set that up and the way the dialogue works is so fucking good and i love it i love the idea that uh early in the movie they talk about how batman knows that he can't be everywhere at once he the, the city's too big there's too much crime he can't be everywhere at once he has to pick and choose but he also has to just have his presence known when the light goes up it's said in the movie like when the light goes up it's not a warning or it's not like, it's not a call to him to action. It is also a warning to everyone out there. Like, Hey motherfuckers, I'm here. I am here and I am going to find you. And the way that they show like characters seeing that, like people doing bad things, like robbing sh stores and stuff, the way they see them see the, the, they see the light, they cower in the fear and they, you know, they back away from what they're doing is, really uh really fascinating um but i thought that the the scene where they were they were talking going back to that really quickly uh that was where i thought the movie needed to end because it just it was such a good ending and really like put into perspective the like hey bruce wayne batman can't like be everywhere at once and he can't do everything there's a brilliant moment of like, he isn't like Riddler has the upper hand here. Like there's no, um, Batman is not at peak form yet. He's only in year two of this. He is trying to do the best that he can, but it also is like, 
It's too much. Why is this door? Excuse me. Too much for him to do all at once. So for him to be able to, or not for him to be able to, but for the Riddler to be able to have the upper hand and for him to miss something, I think is really interesting. But it just leads to this action sequence that isn't fun or interesting. And I think it's just too much, too much like a, a like superhero bullshit. Um, the car chase sequence incredible absolutely incredible love the way it's photographed the the use the minimal use of a lot of the um kind of like what you would think would be the key elements of like a batman movie a lot of fighting a lot of uh, like car chases with batmobile stuff is really put to the side and i thought less is more in this category there's a lot of scenes that are detective work or talking to people and getting more information in a more uh, like in a less like I'm gonna beat the shit out of you if you don't tell me what I'm looking for sort of thing and having that be I keep forgetting I need to arrest these guys um having that be such a focal point for so much of the movie of him actually being a detective makes that last scene like just so unnecessary like the filmmakers were like oof we need that one big set piece moment because a lot of our fan base is going to be upset if Batman's not beating stuff up every you know at, at some point in this movie is a disservice to all of the people who like myself or would be totally fine with that. Um, yeah, uh, it's, there's a lot of it. That's just so freaking good. So good. The way that they have the penguin and him being like more of a mob boss sort of thing. I think it's fantastic. I love the Selena Kyle stuff. The reveal I thought was, uh, was genuinely like emotional and having her, you know, be kind of be Batman, but be the more murderously willing point. I'm trying to handcuff them, but I can't. Oop, that's a flash bomb. Is, is interesting. I love, uh, you know, I like her being kind of playing both sides of like, Hey, we're, we're on the same team. We're going to try and do this thing to help this person, you know, get, get noticed or whatever. Cause no one else is going to, I, what is happening? Where am I going? Uh, can we stop getting up? Why can I not? Okay. Why? All right. This is a porta potty. This is the Batman version of a porta potty. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Yeah, the Rogues Gallery. Great. Uh, the last, I guess the last big piece of it. Um, this guy. Come on. The last big piece of it. Um, so not only is the, the final sequence of the film too long and not my cup of tea, which fine, whatever. There are three scenes after that that aren't great, including a prison scene that I knew was coming. I knew that we were going to get this reveal, and I really didn't want this reveal for a couple of reasons. One, it's very much like Batman Begins. Uh, and two, I'm sick to fucking death of this character. The Joker is in this movie. It is one of the frustrating things about this movie is where like stuff isn't really left to be a mystery because again, like the, the whole, the Batman's appeal is so global and widespread that they kind of have to have, they have to be able to, to cater to people who aren't, who are inattentive or maybe talk during the movie. Um, and there was an opportunity for them to have a different character. And actually one of the, one of the people in the theater as they were walking out was like, Oh, I, you know, I thought it could have been two faced. And you know, then he says uh, like, Oh, they'll treat you like a clown. And then he laughs in his very maniacal way. And you're like, Oh good. This is the Joker. Fucking sucks. <laughs> it sucks. I can't fucking stand it. Um, we currently now have three jokers in the DCEU and or the dc movies just in general um obviously you have jared leto i don't which i don't really think is going to amount to a whole lot after this i mean they put him in justice league whatever and he said the dumb like we live in a society line 
We have Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker, which is the worst Joker of all time. I fucking hate that movie, um, but I don't need to ramble on about it here because uh, there's already uh, a full movie review of that f absolute piece of dog do. That movie fucking sucks. Um, can you just stay down, please? Oh, I was hitting the wrong button. That feels good. No, actually, I wasn't. Just kidding. And now we have this third this third Joker, and it's just, it's just shitty. It's just, all of these, like, everyone who does Batman just has to have the Joker. And I was hoping that they wouldn't, because there's enough of him already. But they had, already, they had talked about wanting to do, like, Mr. Freeze, which would have been awesome. And seeing this movie would have been, like, how would they have done that? How, like, cool could that have been? But instead, we get this character that we've seen a bajillion different times, and we're going to have him in another movie again. And it's like, oh, God, this this sucks. Like, I I literally, I sat there in the theater, and they, they do the cut. I hit the wrong button again. They do the cut from whatever they're going to do, and the, it's like, he finishes up everything, and then... Uh, they cut to this scene and then there's one more scene that's weird between him and Catwoman. There's like three extra scenes in this movie that just don't need to be there or should have been reordered. Uh, one of them doesn't need to be there cause we don't need the Joker, but the Selena Kyle thing probably could have been earlier. I, I don't know. It's, it's a mess. Um, the, uh, the scene, they cut to the prison and someone starts talking to him and he just go, Oh no. Like, I throw my hands in the air and I just go, son of a bitch. Not, like, that loud, but, like, son of a bitch. Like, they're they're doing it. God damn it. God damn it. Like, we're stuck with this character again. There's Poison Ivy. There's Clayface. There's Mr. Freeze. There's, uh, you wouldn't want to do Harley Quinn. There are other villains that you can use. There's the Penguin, which they seem to be setting up as more of a consistent like a, a, a kind of a mainstay threat where he'll he'll make a power grab after this and then move on to be you know a bigger more powerful enemy as like theoretically the movies are concerned who knows what they're going to do with selena kyle catwoman they could make her more of a more of a villain-esque character though i i i don't think they'll stick too far into the villain side i think they'll make her more more anti-hero, more like a, like a Batman who is willing to kill. Um, her character fucking rules. God, Catwoman's awesome in this movie. But you just have other characters you can use. Why are you not using them? I understand Clayface is a, a, a technical um, special effects most likely like a nightmare. I get that. I understand that. Use them anyway. Use them anyway. Please. Stop it. Stop. Bane? You got Bane? They kind of used him in Dark Knight Returns or Rises or whatever the fuck. But it's Joker. They're going to set up Joker again. They're going to set up a character that we've seen so many times. So many times. So many times. Stop it. That was, that was the biggest deflation and I knew they were going to do it. My big worry going into it was actually that they were going to, um, that they were going to use the Joaquin Phoenix Joker and I was going to be fucking livid. Uh, instead it's a different guy and it's not credited as the Joker. I think it's credited as, um, suspicious inmate or something. It's, it's a weird, a weird title. Cause I was actually looking at the credits to see who it was. Cause it is very much like his face is, is, um, lit from behind to create like a silhouette sort of thing. Uh, which is another cool thing they did with the Riddler throughout. You don't really see the Riddler's face until the very end. And God, uh, this movie, I'm just so conflicted on it. I wish I wish I liked it more. I really genuinely do. I thought that it was so good. It was so incredible. The car chase was fucking awesome. The action sequences in the early part are good. I think if you fix the end and instead of having Batman end up in this like 
weirdly similar to Hurricane Katrina-esque situation of dams breaking and a major sports stadium being used as a harboring for uh, displaced people. Um, I think instead of having that whole thing with the all the Riddler people who are like willing to kill and maim and murder, which I think speaks to our current internet age that like there are people who are so willing to go out and do that sort of thing. Um, and the, the, like the global reach of, of how he can muster a movement of people who have always felt like outcasts to, um, to be willing to do something like that, I think is, it makes sense, but also is kind of like, I don't know. I just, I guess I just don't, I just don't like it. I just, I don't like it. I think if, I think if you have the thing where fuck it, the bombs go off anyway, cause he Batman misses the clue. And then he watches from the interrogation room. Um, and then goes in and like tries to actually help people as Bruce Wayne, giving him more of a directive with his, uh, with the, the billionaire, like sort of lifestyle. I think that can be helpful. I know that a lot of it kind of is going to end up boiling down to him realizing that he can't just be vengeance. He has to be a beacon of hope as well, because people will take the I am vengeance, that sort of mentality, and they'll twist it into their own sick ways, which is what the Riddler does. I think it makes sense in that context, but I do think that there is a better way to to end that movie. Um, and it's, it's kind of like when I was watching knives out, I was thinking about this where they structured a movie in a way that I just don't think works, but I think because they structured it that way, it's difficult to come up with a different way to do it. If that makes sense. Um, I remember hating, I did not like like the second act of that movie, but it was integral to the story that they were telling. Um, and I think that makes it hard to take things and twist it and move it into a different way. I think that's where this movie falls as well is they, they want it to, to go a certain way, which all of this probably sounds like very dumb, but I feel like some of the movies, I wish I could think of one offhand where it's just like, Oh, there's like a simple tweak you could have made here that like would have flowed this movie better. Um, I think if you, if you empower Bruce Wayne to, make changes to actually improve the city both as Batman and and as Bruce Wayne taking the project that his dad started and molding it into something that actually does help people. I think that's a a far better ending than like, than what they have. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a rough one. It's, um, it's a rough review. It's, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's conflicting. It's, it's difficult because of how much I enjoyed most of it and how much I think the last bit of it sucks. Like genuinely just isn't good. Huh? I think that about covers it. I think 38 minutes about this is, uh, it's more than enough. Um, if you stuck all the way through it, hey, thanks a lot. I understand there's a lot of spoilers there in that last part. Uh, that Joker reveal is going to be big for a lot of people. It is not big for me. Um, let's see, what is there anything else that I would want to that I would want to hit on real quick? I can't think of it. I feel like I've covered. I feel like I've covered covered it pretty well. Um, this is a long review. I understand that. Uh, but I, again, thanks for sticking out. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you want to see more reviews uh, on the channel, please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, there are some movies looking that I'm looking forward to. They won't be a regular thing. It, it definitely won't be, but maybe some of these bigger things that I'm really excited for, I'll cover on the channel in the future. Um, be sure to scroll down, subscribe, ring that bell. I'm running out of vocals here. So a big swig of water. Ah, to finish this off strong, Batman, pretty good. Should have been a lot better. Could have been a lot better, but still pretty good. 
Um, thank you again so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I will see you uh, another day in a different video. Scroll down, subscribe, ring that bell, do all that good stuff. Goodbye.